What's up guys, Sean the Bro here, and today we're going to be going over more of the advanced input system. In today's episode, we are specifically going to be going over flipping uh, directional commands and directional inputs. So basically, when I have, I have two characters. I have a character on the left, and I have a character on the right. And both these characters have their command list that they can use. We don't want the characters to have command lists that are different if they're the same character, unless for some reason, you know, maybe if you have different stances or something. But, you know, ignoring all the, the more complex options here. Say we have two characters that are the same character, right? These are both mutant, and their movesets should be the same. And because of that, we want certain moves to, you know, rely on our direction or certain inputs that we put in, such as for the fireball right now, I have left, right, light attack. Okay, that's left, right, light attack, and that's good, it, that performs. But if I do left, right, light attack on the second character, and he doesn't perform the move. Well, technically, he would prefer, perform the move, but um, think about it, that doesn't make sense. Um, why would his input still be left, right? That means he has to walk forward and then back to perform the action. Whereas in fighting games, it's not really left, right, light attack, it's back, forward, light attack. Or like if you're doing quarter circle, it's like you start at back and then go, well, I guess you start down and then go forward, not down then right. So with that in mind, the mutant should be able to go, the second mutant here on the right should be able to go back, then forward, then perform the attack. Just like I did for this fireball. Back, then forward, then perform the attack. Back, forward, attack. Back, forward, attack. There we go. Okay. All right, wait for the timer here to begin. Now, we gotta go back, forward, attack. So for the for this mutant, we gotta go back, forward, attack. And there we go. So that's what we want. We want the commands to be mimicked, so they're, you know, the directions that you have to go in relation to what direction that character is facing are the same. And that's what we'll be covering today. One final thing before we get started, I should know I'm not changing the command buffers uh, depending on the way you're facing, at least not yet, because if you do that, then you'll want to change all of them. So if any of your commands have left and right, you check if they are flipped, and then you just reverse the inputs that are required to perform them. It is actually quite easy to do and definitely something we can cover, but a lot of games will say, you know, command list written as if on left side or something like that. That way you know, okay, this is the command that I have to perform, but this is if I'm on the left side, so I have to reverse my inputs for if I'm on the right side. And that's basically the logic we'll be performing today. The arrows and everything that prints are still going to be valid for the direction we're moving. We're just going to flip the input when it goes into the input buffer. That way when it checks against the keys in there, we can determine if we get the right value or not and, and can actually perform that command. All right. So today's episode is actually very simple. Um, I'm going to essentially clean up uh, some of the other stuff that we had in the previous episodes with the input stuff, and then we are going to reverse the inputs. So let's start with the cleanup because this is just some general notes I want to make, but I think it's important, and I don't want to leave this out to the end and people don't see it. So let's go over some things. Sorry, I, got, I went to the wrong file. The fighter template character.h. In here, we have our f command structure where we had these inputs before, which were strings, and these were like the names of the keys or buttons that we were pressing, which was good until we decided we wanted the action mappings to do the work for us and not the hard-coded values, and that's much, much better. I left these in here to show you guys that you can still use them, um, but now I want to kind of eliminate them. If you want to still use them in your game for whatever reason, you can comment them out like I've done here. So a regular comment looks like this. But when I go to the next line, then it's not here anymore, right? A This is a block comment, or basically just a comment where you can determine how much gets gets put away. So you do this, this slash, asterisk, and then you put the name of the comment. So comment here 
But then if I hit enter, as long as I'm still within the other asterisk and slash, this is the ending, it'll still be in the comment. I can do as many lines as I want. Um, and then if I enter outside of this asterisk and slash, then I'm outside of the comment. Now the reason I make that so apparent is because that's what I've done here. I made this uh, completely commented out so the inputs is no longer in the F command array. Again, feel free to use it if you'd like. You can flat out delete this. I left this as a comment so I could show you what we're getting rid of as opposed to getting rid of it prior to the video and then just being like, yeah, get rid of that because that would be very confusing. So you can get rid of the inputs array. We are no longer going to need that. We are going to be using the input types from here on out. You could also technically get rid of the, if I could find it, check input buffer for command function. We now have the check input buffer for command using type function. I have not commented this out. Instead, I've commented everything in the function body out. So let me show you, let me go there. Um, check input buffer for command, I've completely commented out. But remember, I still have check input buffer for command using type, which has all the logic we want and need. So feel free to get rid of the first iteration of the function, if you still have two. If you got rid of the first one on the first episode, then this is pointless. You've already done this. So basically, just get rid of the old hard-coded stuff that we had. If you did not have that in here, well then, good work. You're already good to go. One last thing I need to cover. In the mutant character and all your specific characters, where we had the inputs um, for their specific keys as opposed to the types. So now we have the types, input types.add. Uh, if you just had the specific keys before, feel free to get rid of all of these. I've commented them out once again, but you can feel free to delete them entirely. They are no longer going to be used. Okay, so anything that's in that green comment text is not going to be used. All right, and with that, let's get into how to flip our inputs. So the flipping of the inputs is actually insanely simple. Uh, there's just one thing we have to look out for after we do it. So we have this add input to input buffer function. And at this point, it's a good time to say, if you have not watched any of the fighting game episodes, we are in episode 66. We are quite far along into the series. We still have very, very uh, much more to go. So if you want to catch up and you want to follow along with us, then feel free to click right here. I'll give you the playlist for every fighting game episode that we have done so far. As I said, we have plenty to go. So, you know... You still have time to catch up. There's still plenty of things that are going to be coming out. And otherwise, if you don't care about that, you still should watch the input buffer system episodes because we are going to be building off of those systems that we've already made. So I'll leave a link to the in this iCard to the input buffer episodes. Alrighty. So we have this add input to input buffer function. And this is what gets called when we press a key and uh, the P1 or P2, any key pressed gets triggered. That event that basically has all the keys in our input action mappings and input axes that we set up in the previous episodes. And then it calls this and adds it to our input buffer. And then we check our input buffer against our command buffer to determine if we've used the command or not. All right, and that's stuff we've all done before. So my first instinct was to try and put the, uh, to try and flip the input buffer in this function where we're checking the inputs. But this is not good. If we were to do this at any point, we'd be looping through multiple, many, many times here to try and find the correct input and then changing it in here, which is actually going to make you like double reverse it, which will send it back to its original state. Or even more, you know, you can reverse it like eight or nine times depending on how many inputs are in this input buffer. So this is actually dangerous. Really what we want to do is just feed it the proper data before we check it. We don't need to try and reverse it once it's already being checked. So in add input to input buffer, before we even call input buffer dot add or check input buffer for command using type, we can just do this logic right here. Now, one thing to note, um, I have technically 
uh, my my world is a little bit different than a lot of people who are watching the tutorials. So this condition, instead of being is flipped, maybe it should be is not flipped like it is for me. But regardless, it's going to be one of these two options. Whatever way is flipped for you. If you're player one, left character, uh, when they're facing right, is flipped, then good. You know, you know that. And otherwise, good. You know that. As long as you know it, and as long as you've been using that the entire time, this will work perfectly fine. It's also worth stating, I should probably change this variable to be like, is facing right or something. Is flipped was good because I originally meant it to be player one, but things got confusing very quickly. So, yeah. Basically, I say if not is flipped. Now for me, when I play my game, I can go to my characters here. Ready? Fight. And mutant character BP is actually player two, believe it or not. And player two, if I search the details, is considered not flipped. So the character on the right for me is not flipped. And if I go to mutant character BP1, just to prove the point, that is the character on the left. And they're actually considered is flipped. So remember, my game is a little bit weird and it's a little bit different from a lot of other people's. But here you go, just so you can see, my character on the left is flipped. So when I say not is flipped, I'm referring to the right, the character on the right. Okay. So if the character that's on the right, if, if this is the character that's on the right that we're adding an input to the input buffer for, then we need to perform the logic to determine if we want to flip these. And flipping them is insanely easy. You can actually even do it in less lines than this if you wanted. But basically, all you have to do is check if the input info which is the basically the information of the key or button we pressed dot input type equals equals e input type e forward so if this was a forward input then we just set the input to be backward input info dot input type equals e input type backward and that's because our forward binding here our input type of forward actually just relies on the scale of the input axis so if we're if we're positive on the input axis then we're going forward if we're negative on the input axis then we're going backward but that won't work if if two characters have to go different directions like in this case so positive in on the uh, y input axis is to the right if you're facing right then yes moving right is both positive um, on the input axis and it's also moving the character forward but if you're facing left then moving right in the game is positive on the input axis but the character is moving backward so if they're not flipped and their input is forward we actually want their input to be backward that's how we know it'll get checked in the command buffer properly else if their input is backward we want their input to be forward because, again, for the same reason we just stated, if it's backward, that would be to the left. But if they're facing left, then that character is going to be moving forward, not backward. Then when it gets into this function, it will check against the command buffer. And since those controls are reversed, it will basically check the same controls as the non-reverse character. And thus, you can perform commands just as easily. And since we actually display the... Uh, input stack icons in the widget when we press the key it doesn't reverse our icons so we don't have to worry about any bugs that come up with that and it's that simple guys that's all you need to do to be able to reverse your inputs on your input buffer and be able to have left and right movement work with your characters this does work with controllers and it works with keyboard so whatever you want to use this will work for both. This is just reversing the, the values that we got. All right, guys, that's all I got for you today. In the next episode, we'll be covering dashing and double inputs within our input buffers. So we'll be able to press double press like forward or any key really, like light attack, light attack. And then we will be able to perform an action. 
Right now that doesn't actually work because if you press the button one time, it will actually trigger your action. And that's just a minor flaw with the way we've set up our system, but it's actually um, a bit of an issue with the way Unreal has set up their input detection. Not really an issue, but just a complication, let's say, for the way we have to set this up. However, we will be able to do that after next episode, so get ready to perform dashes and or runs. And if you have any sort of combos where you have to keep mashing a button, like I know there are some uh, auto combos that happen if you just keep pressing the same attack, those will also be able to occur after the next episode. So anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. I'm Sean the Bro. If this video helped you, please subscribe. It does more for my channel than anything else you can do, and I just really appreciate it. It just lets me know I'm doing a good job and it's completely free. I want to give a huge shout out to all my Patreon members and my YouTube membership supporters. So thank you so much for continuing to support me and helping me continue these series. It makes it very easy for me and I, I love, love working on these and working with you guys. So thank you so much for uh, showing that you care as well. If you had any issues with this tutorial or any of my tutorials, feel free to join the Discord community in the description. We will be able to help you and get any of the issues you had fixed up. And lastly, guys, if you want to check out some programming live streams, I'm doing them all on YouTube now. I did do some on Twitch, but YouTube is just the better spot for it. I think it's more convenient for everybody. So you can go ahead and check out the live streams we do, either at this iCard, I'll link one of them, or every Friday, 6 to 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We're working on a side-scroller game based off Castlevania. But that's all I got for you today, guys. So thank you so much for watching. I'm Sean the Bro, and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye, guys.